Hello again everyone. Today we have EX06 of the Gundam Converge line. Uh, I think they're designed by this company Fusion Works, but Bandai owns Gundam. So uh, this came out in 2015 and then we have some images back here. So probably a story explaining it. So different weapons, two weapons, and there we go. Actually not much actually after all. Let's open this up. There we go. Let's open it from the top. So this gum from that year. Ooh, that's pretty gross. As usual, fandom here. Saying this is from, I guess, a super deformed Gundam franchise called SD Gundam Gaiden. And unlike Musha, which I reviewed actually, it's a Western character. You know, Armored Knight. Let's see what this says. RX is based off, I think, maybe the RX-78, but obviously doesn't look anything like it. And summon magic. I think it might be a sentient being, these SD Gundams. They don't have pilots. Oh, alright, that's a different little tab. So, there it is from the cartoon, I guess. And, uh, this looks pretty cool. If this was, like, a real grade kit, I would consider buying that. So being from 2015 or so, it's going to come with this silly foot stand that in most cases, 99% of the time you don't need it because the figures will stand without them. So it's kind of a waste of plastic. It's not kind of, it is a waste of plastic. Nice metallic blue. Very cool. Well, yeah, we'll see if that's a surprise. Alright, let's break this apart. Oh yeah, stuck paint is an issue very often. You don't want to twist. I don't think you want to twist because I think you might tear the peg off. So I try to just pull it straight out but sometimes I'll wiggle it back and forth to try to have the paint break and then I'll pull it out. Well, I'm going to have to wiggle it some more. Yeah. So these early figures, yeah, they have round pegs with round holes so if paint gets stuck it's going to be a problem. The later ones have hex holes so it's better. But yeah, see this? This is dumb because it just blocks so much the rear and then I'm positive it's going to stand on its own anyways. So, it's got really glossy red feet, uh, and then it's obviously a metallic blue, like a light blue color, and I guess sky blue. And then, yes, you have these spikes here, like an old medieval knight would have. It's got big round metallic red uh, kneecaps, and then the upper torso, though, is now more of a matte or satin finish blue, a, different, a darker blue. And then a bunch of paneled lines and dots and stuff like that. Very neat. And then, <laughs> sadly, these do look like something that I shouldn't mention in a child safe YouTube channel. You'll have to guess what I'm ta thinking about. But they got red dots. <laughs> okay. And then nice uh, like ribbing here for the torso. And this big golden cross is pretty cool. Very fitting for an old western knight. Alright, the neck is just molded in, it's not uh, painted a different color. Usually the necks are a different color on Converge, but you usually won't see it anyway. So, let's see about this right arm here. We, uh, it's just blue with a little silver on the shoulders. Does this hand move? I think the hand must come out. Yeah, round peg. It's a round hole to hold a weapon. Pretty much mirrored on this side. A little spike here on the elbow. This is kind of weak, actually. This is very plain. They could have molded something there. Alright, but it's nice that both hands can hold weapons and both hands can articulate. Very often, the, this left arm just has a molded in hand, at least in the early converges. Like the, the first 20 waves of converges. Alright, so that's done. Let's get this head out of here. Alright, a lot of paint going on here. First, the eyes. They are translucent, like, I, I guess a tan or yellow. They're not, I 
guess you I guess you'd call that a yellow or like champagne color. And then I think there might be like some molded details. Let me get a flashlight to really show. Or maybe that's an air pocket in the molding actually. I think that might be what it is. Yeah. Alright. Hmm. Alright, well anyways, it's nice that they're clear. It's not just painted, right? It's got a red chin, very nice. Uh, the metallic blue is all over here. Some silver wing ear things, red up here, gold for the antennae. And it's interesting the antennae is already attached. This whole thing is attached. It's nice that there's some molded details on the back of the head as well. So very cool. Let's see if we can move the head left and right. Oh, that's a tight fit. Well, this chin is, is colliding. So, I mean, I guess you could push it down here, but it's really gappy, right? So I think it really just wants to sit straight forward. And then, yeah, that chin, maybe you get two or three degrees of movement. Not much, but... All right, and unfortunately, it's looking very, very down, like 40 degrees down. So you can't really see the eyes at all from the front, which is unfortunate. Uh, that's a problem with almost all converges. Alright, so we got two pegs back here, so we have things that look like wings. This says R, so I'm assuming it goes on this side. Yeah, I think that would make sense. But what I like is the uh, the things are round, so you can flip-flop them. So let's just look at it this way. From the front, you really can't see much of the, those wings. But let's flip these over now, and then see what happens. There you go. Now you can see them. I think I prefer them this way, actually. So I'm going to do that even if it's not realistic to the cartoon or whatever. So there's definitely a peg hole there. And there's two brown peg holders. This one sticks out quite a bit. And obviously you can put one of these round-handed handled objects in there. If you wanted to have this, say, sword sticking up. Or this lance. Hmm. You know what? This thing is... It's not hollow all the way through. I was wondering why won't the thing go in there? So that's kind of weird. Well, first let's just show off these weapons. So sadly this is really warped. You can dip that in hot water and then try to straighten it out as it cools. Or maybe it'll just straighten it out if you dip it in hot water. You know what? That bothers me so much. I'll be back. Yeah, so essentially you uh, boil some water, put them in the water, and then I just strained it out wet as it's cooling, and it's definitely a lot straighter than it was before. All right, let's take a look at this guy uh, holding this thing. That's a tight fit, though. Yeah, all right. It's not going to drop anytime soon. It's such a big weapon that it hides a lot of the robot. So you might want to, you know, pose it downwards, maybe. Let's try this way. Yeah, that's not so bad, actually. And then the other side, if you want to double wield, we have this uh, red flamed sword. Interesting. I mean, the whole thing is energy, it looks like, but with a gold cross on it. I don't know what happens in that super deformed cartoon. Oh, that's super tight as well. That's kind of weird. Not a fan. All right. There you go, you can see what's going on there. Now there's a shield here, and that's quite uh, elaborate. It's a white metallic green with a dark metallic green on the inside, and that big cross. I should have probably planned this out too. Well, anyways, I'll do it later. Uh, oddly, it's there's no peg hole on the forearm, right? That seems like a massive oversight. Because almost all the other Gundams do have a peg hole here. And you know, you can peg it into the arm. So it would actually be a shield. Very strange. So I guess the only way to put this is in the back. Oh, but I put the wings on backwards. Hmm. You know what? I'm not even sure if it would make a difference. Let's take these wings off. Wait a sec. This shield is offset. It's, you know, the peg isn't even centered. So it's like that, or but it's colliding with the head, like this. That, that 
That's weird. Maybe, it, I guess it could go like that. Let me take these weapons out. You know what? This is kind of weird, but I guess you could just maybe peg this right into the forearm. It, it will. So you could make it do that, like it's actually jousting. I guess that works. It just looks a little really strange from the back, right? But if you're only looking at it from the front, it's not so bad. It does look like it's going to be jousting. Uh, I'm a little curious now if I just do this on the other side. I think it's going to cover up more of the more of the robot. Ah, boy, that one's here. For some reason, this peg hole is a lot smaller on this side. Yeah, I don't think it's going to fit on this side, so that's too bad. Yeah, I have a suspicion it's actually designed to just go in here. No, that can't be the case. I guess that would explain... It must have to do something with this. Uh, hmm. There's no peg hole. Just look at the box. Look at the box. Oh, I see. The hand holds it there. Okay. So, let's see. The hand's got to hold this thing. I see. This is just a handle for the shield. And that goes on there, hopefully. And then that goes on here. Oh, that's not fitting very well. Maybe I put the shield on afterwards. That's right. Maybe twist it outwards. Yeah, that might do it. Actually, twist twist that thing outwards. Well. That seems, uh, hmm. I guess we should move the arm down, then it looks more natural. Okay, so that that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. go. So now I can put the wings back on, even upside down. And then the last bit is this thing. That's supposed to go here and that's supposed to hold that lance. I'm just going to leave the hand in it for now. Yeah, so it would just be a handle sticking out. I suppose maybe you could also put it upside down. Oh, maybe this area with the ribbing? Yeah, it will stay that way. Then it'll just be a pointed thing sticking out, right? But I definitely want to pose it with the actual lance. Maybe I'll just leave that brown thing back there, though, since I can't see it in most cases. And then I guess this is just going to go go away in a baggie. I'm not a big fan of a clear-handled sword. It's very strange, but I guess, uh, you know, in a, cart a super deformed cartoon that happens. All right, well, it definitely looks like a knight, that's for sure. What's funny is, you know, this actually looks more realistic than the thing it's based on. You know, the thing it's based on is so deformed, it's crazy. This is super deformed. This is just, like, moderately deformed, right? So it's interesting that this is actually more realistic than it should be. But that thing is still awesome, so I guess see. So I just had to pull up this image from that same fandom page. So here we have the knight we're talking about. This is called uh, Command. It's just called Command. And this is Musha, which I've reviewed. So I guess in this cartoon, those three are like friends, pals. So I do have the Musha, which is uh, Converge EX05. But, oh boy, the antenna. I gotta glue that in place. But for me, I feel like, uh, for some reason it just looks more realistic, which is odd to say about a deformed figure. 
I guess this is just really over the top fantasy. Whereas this still, to me, looks like a samurai. Alright. Speaking of old samurai looking or knight looking things, uh, here's number. I think Nagina, darn it, I didn't write what number it is in the Converge series. So I gotta relabel that. But it's called Big Nagina. And it looks like a knight to me. But I think that's from a normal cartoon, like a normal proportioned cartoon of Gundams. And I think from the original Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam cartoon, we have number 26, Guyan, or Guyan, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And then number 267 is the redo, and it's actually more basic looking, because it's trying to look like the original cartoon. So, we'll get a different angle. Right, I, I detailed this up with some paint wash. This I haven't touched, but there's no panel lines. It's almost like all smooth because it's trying to look like a cartoon. Darn it, I hate these spin coasters. <laughs> anyways, so always, they don't make a big one. So anyways, all right, well, let me uh, move this guy over here. He's gonna look congested there. I think uh, it's an interesting style, right? It's it clearly looks like a medieval knight, but I'm not sure if I like it. It's uh, I don't know why. I should like it. I like the metallic paints that it has going on. Uh, it doesn't look too cartoony, but for some reason, when it's all added together, I definitely like the Shin Musha. Or actually, I like all the other ones I showed you. Uh, I like this one the least. Alright, well anyways, I think there's a, another one from called Superior Dragon, which might be a super deformed based one as well. Like cartoon super deformed based one, but we'll have to see when they, I get that in. Thanks for watching today. Bye.